Hey guys, it's Tessa from HandleTheHeat.com and today we're going to be making homemade brioche burger buns. These are the best burger buns you will ever eat. They elevate any burger to a whole new delicious level. You are going to absolutely go crazy for these buns. And I'm gonna be sharing with you all of my favorite bread baking tips along the way for how to make something like this because this is a little bit more involved but it's totally doable. You're going to have so much fun making these and be sure to watch all the way to the end for all the best advice so that you have nothing but success in the kitchen every time you make homemade bread. So if you'd like to learn how to make these homemade brioche hamburger buns, then just keep watching. So in the bowl of my stand mixer, I'm combining three tablespoons of warm whole milk and one cup of warm water. And whenever you're making something with yeast, you wanna make sure that the temperature of the liquid is warm, but not exceeding 115 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise you run the risk of killing the yeast. So I've just added in two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast, and you can always use regular yeast in place of instant yeast, and two and a half tablespoons of granulated sugar and one large egg. And I'm going to save the remaining egg for the egg wash on top later. Now I have a, a flour mixture here of three cups bread flour and a third cup all-purpose flour, and I've just added enough to kind of get the dough started and get it um, nice and mixed up. And the reason that we're using mostly bread flour is because bread flour has more protein, which helps increase gluten development, which is really important for this recipe because we're adding so many ingredients that actually inhibit gluten development. The sugar, the eggs, the butter, all of that stuff inhibits the gluten from developing. And we need a lot of gluten so that these hamburger buns can be nice and strong in structure and nice and tall. So I've also added in a little bit of salt and three tablespoons of softened butter. And the reason I waited to add the salt is because salt can kill yeast. And this recipe is kind of a delicate bread recipe. We wanna make sure that we get it to rise as much as possible because it is such an enriched dough with that extra fat and sugar. It took about 10 to 12 minutes of kneading with my mixer for me to be able to get that window pane, which I just showed you. And that's when I can pull the dough apart slightly and it won't rip, instead the light will kind of shine through. And that's when I know that I have created enough strands of gluten. So I've just let the dough rise in an oiled bowl for about one and a half hours. It'll take less time if you used instant yeast and a little bit more time if you used active dry yeast. And I'm just going to Pat this out on a floured work surface and then cut it into eight pieces because this recipe makes eight buns. And you could of course double this recipe. Just be aware of how much capacity your stand mixer has. And I would not recommend, this was, this is probably the one recipe I would not recommend kneading by hand because of how long it takes to develop that gluten and you really need to be kneading for quite a long time and doing it by hand would be exhausting and you might not ever get the, the final result that we need. So now I'm just shaping those eight pieces into balls, just kind of um, rolling it around to finish off so that it's a nice, perfect round. And then that'll go on a lined baking sheet and I'll cover it with a towel. And the reason I don't wanna cover it with plastic wrap here is because I don't want the plastic wrap to stick to the buns and ruin their beautiful shape. So after about one hour, they've doubled in size, and now I can brush them with that egg. I'm just gonna beat an egg with about one tablespoon of water and brush that all over the buns, and this will help give them a nice, beautiful, shiny, golden brown exterior. And then for an extra touch, and this is totally optional, I'm adding sesame seeds on top. And this will go in a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. And I'm gonna let them cool completely and I can either use them now or I can freeze them and freeze them for up to one month. And look how beautiful, soft, fluffy, they're perfect. All right guys, so that is exactly how you make these buns and the full principle recipe, as always, is at the link below on my blog. And as you can see here, I have some leftover buns that I've actually frozen because these are perfect for making ahead of time. You can either double the batch or if you have any leftovers, just pop them in the freezer, let them defrost and you can toast them or do whatever you want before serving and they're absolutely perfect. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see next time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.